Alrighty, yeah. So we're going to go through this tutorial on multi-way plots. We're going to look um, specifically at this spot here, right? Which is a multi-way plot that I run in Monka. So this this the solve which um, is is a complete solve. So it's got a complete tree associated with it. Um, I don't think it's got any abstraction, although it does have some some bucketing. Um, because that's just how Monka speeds up its uh, its its solution, um, and yeah, so this is a single raised plot played between the big blind, the cutoff, and the button. All right, so we're just going to have a look through this. Um, unfortunately, since Monka Viewer doesn't work for post flop, um, I don't think like I can't save this to so you can view it in Monka Viewer. You guys won't be able to, to view this um, unless you have Monka Solver yourself. So um, I think you might be able to download Monka Viewer and then and then open it, although I'm not entirely sure because sometimes you just you, they just don't let you. Um, look at like the, the flop solves unless you've bought the damn thing. So we'll just go through this. Um, if I can figure out a way to... I don't know, it, it could be, um, I don't know, if, if one of you guys have, have some idea how to convert this into buy or something, it would, it would be nice. Um, Alright, so let's have a look at the ranges. So the ranges, so this is um, actually a cutoff open for two and a half. And then the button and the big line come in. So the button will come in with this range, so the green component of this range. Um, so it's got a little, little bit of... Did I put jacks in it? I don't think so. Um, like tens and stuff. Um, all the way down to twos. And it's, it's a simplified version of the range, I think. Or maybe it isn't. Um, honestly, I can't remember what I did. Anyway, so this is the, the button's range, and then after we get the, the button call, the small line will fold, and the big line will continue with, with this range here, so the, the, the green part here. So the, the big lines um, doesn't have a lot of this sort of Broadway type stuff. They, they have a little bit of it, a bit of offset Broadway, but um, not at, as a high frequency as the low pop pairs on the bottom right. So before we um, dig, into, dig into what happens, we can have a look at the, at the equity. So this little um, thing here shows us the equity graph between all, th all three players. Um, so button is button, small blind here is is the big blind in our scenario, and the big blind is the uh, the cutoff. So we've got um, so the, so the green one is is the cutoff, blue is the big blind, and, and red is button. So we can look at the, the, the three different ranges. Um, we can see that at the very top where it says basically on the on the right you've got sevens, kings and twos. Um, the big blind has, uh, sorry not the big blind, the, the cutoff here has pocket kings, the other, the other guys don't have kings. Um, cutoff also has sevens, but the density of um, those very strong hands, the this sets really, cutoff doesn't really have as, as, as much um, anything in terms of um, two pairs, and doesn't really have as um, yeah, it doesn't have two pairs with the, with the king seven. Um, so you can see that it drops off pretty quick, while in terms of the the proportion of the range, right? So we'll draw a line here. I don't know. It doesn't have percentage on the bottom, on the bottom um, axis, even though bloody should. So both of these should have should be should have percentages on them, make it a little easier to see. Um, compared to the button and the um, the big blind, the density of the very strong hands is, isn't super high. Um, but on the other hand, if you look over here in this middle portion on the left, um, the cutoff um, does have a fair bit more king x in their range, and so this represents this part of the range here. So all that is king x. 
while on the other hand the button doesn't have as much king x and the, it drops off quite sharply because of the lack of king x but the big blind has uh, almost as much king x as, as the um, as the cutoff does right um, and then the rest is just uh, milling pocket pairs 7x and then at the bottom here is just kind of air and very weak pairs right very weak pocket pairs and the air type stuff um, equity doesn't really show you as as much as um, in terms of information as you would like but you can have a look at what's going on there to sort of guide us going forward all right so going forward you've got a king 7 2 board on this king seven two board, you got the here. This first player is the big blind. You got the cutoff here and the, and the button here. Even though it'll, it'll, it'll say otherwise in, in, in the sim because the sim only recognizes three players as small blind, big blind, um, and button. But here, this first player is the is a big blind, a small blind, and folded. And we've got the cutoff and button. All right. So both these two players here should respect the fifty percent rule and try and check their ranges. So I can try to construct their checking ranges. Um, such that the button can't really bet more than half a ton. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, so they can't print or just like steal? Is that. Well, we got the 50% rule. Yeah, can you just refresh on that really quick? Yeah, sure. So the 50% rule states that the out of position players should construct their betting and checking ranges such that the imposition player can't bet or raise more than half the time. And the reason for that? Um, if you have a very strong hand, if your opponent bets into you more than half the time, you're going to make more money by check-raising. Hmm. Alright. Okay. So you're going to make more, more money by, by check-raising if you have a strong hand um, than, than betting out yourself. Of course, and then if it's a lot less than half the time, you're going to want to bet it. And so you get this equilibrium point around around 50%, where um, it also depends a little bit on the bet size, but the vast majority of the time, the 50% rule is going to hold. So both these players will, will check to, to try and prevent the, bet, the, the button from betting more than half the time. So if we look at the check, check line, check, check, the button's check back range is going to be 53%. Okay. Now I've given three three bet sizes on the flop. Uh, 25, 50, and 100. And on this flop, um, basically, only 25% is, is being used. And this sort of makes sense in, in multiple pots. Also, the, the board is um, quite dry as well. But it makes sense in terms of multiple pots that we usually want to bet quite small. Reason being is because even though we're making quite a small bet, right, the other players have to fold it at a, at a fairly high frequency um, comparatively in order to get the collective folder ranges um, to end up being uh, folding by the correct amount. Um, so if you make a 25% bet, alpha for that is going to be about 20%. So if the two players collectively fold around 20% uh, of the time, so if they both fold 20% of the time, then boss will be indifferent. So here, the opposition player bets 25% of the pot, alpha is 0 0.2, you get a folding frequency of um, 41% and 25%. Alright, uh, Hey Thomas. Yep. Could you um hover over the uh, metal position player when he faces a bet yeah, from we'll out of position? Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, okay. Where was I? Yeah, so the probably that, that either player um The other player, uh, the both players fold, is going to be the um, uh, the uh, forty percent from the the first guy, 
times the um, 25 percent so 0 0.4 5 times 0 0.26 right it's around 10 percent of the time okay so the probably that both players fold against this very small bet um, is around Sorry, too many is around 10%, which kind of makes sense if you have some draws in your range, then you want to be folding a bit less. Also, the imposition players generally fold a bit less. All right, so against a small bet, I mean, first we're gonna have a look at the ranges, so just right click here. Let's go to normalize range, see what it looks like. So, the density of the range has got a little bit of sets in terms of the sevens and twos, um, but it's mostly top pair and a little bit of middle pair um, alongside bluffs right and you can see that it's not super polar I mean there's a little bit of sets um, and a little bit of two pair but it's not a hugely polar it is only slightly more polar than the range of the than the checking range right Polar in the sense that we've got you know top pair and middle pair don't really have very many weak pairs, and we've got you know, ace ace high and other and other bluffs in which which would be sort of backdoors associated with the seven and, and the king, right? Backdoors with some flush draws, backdoor flush draws, right? So what's the line that you want to look at? Bet twenty five and then the response. Yeah, just the uh, middle position player. It, like his defense versus uh, the button's defense, how we should be uh, adjusting. Yeah, I mean, because you're playing in the middle, there's a chance that the um, player behind you will overcall. And because of that, the expectation of calling with a middling hand goes down by quite a lot. You can't really bluff catch um, too much. <laughs> Of course, because there's another street left to go, you can bluff catch um, some of the time and then um, bluff and then use those weak hands to, to bluff the turn. All right, but you can't. Yeah, do, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I, 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 I know you'll get to, you'll get to this, but um, I know you'll get to this, but uh, you know, at some point, I'd be curious to see how uh, loosely we defend. Um, like if we're in the middle, oh, what's the weakest flush draw we can defend? Like on our two tone board, or yeah, on our two tone board, um, you know how we'd be playing our flush draws differently in the middle. I know with a player behind, we'd probably be raising a pretty good chunk of our range as opposed to being on the button and facing a bet and a fold. But um, yeah, I mean here in the middle, there's not really much of a raising range. Um, which is a little bit different to what I've said previously. Um, in very previous draws, you can sort of like min raise it up to continue if you wanted to, if you're, if you're like in the middle. But yeah, you know, yeah. it's one of these situations where because you're in position against the the person who's betting, you can call, then hopefully that the hopefully the the button will fold and you'll get to see the see the turn card. You'll be in position against the the big blind and um, you'll be able to put the money in when you want to. So. If, there's okay. Old, yeah, that's a fair bit more more raising here. Okay. I mean, conversely, if if we go, um, yeah, if you go check quarter pot call. A fair bit of squeezing. Um, yeah, once again here, when you're betting it, you're in position. You don't really want to. Don't really want to continue. So it goes check check. Bet quarter pot. Because now we're out of position against the against the person who's betting. Right, we've got a early hit percentage substantial racing range. So all these multi multiple pots, even though the bet is very tiny, um, you don't really want to raise too much in position. You usually just want to call and see a turn, especially on a board that's this kind of that's this dry. Um, you just want to you usually just want to call and then see the turn card. 
Um, if you're monkey in the middle, so say the first player bet, you're in the middle. Um, because you're in position to play up play the player who bet, you can call and hope that the players behind you fold. Right. And this has mainly got to do with the fact that it's only three way and the board is fairly dry. If the board was wet and it was even more multi way, say it was four way or five way, then you basically want to start playing closer to, to raise or fold against even small bets from out of position players. Why do you. I play, I play raise or fold because of your previous video. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, here, but uh, I don't know if you can call here multi way. You only in two way pot. Yeah, I mean, it, I only play play check race here. Or yeah, I mean, so here, here if you're on, I never if you're on the button, you don't really need to have a donking arrangement. It's only eight point six percent donks. So, like in terms of multi way, like the the out of position player, the, the person who's first to act will almost always check. Right, they're going to have a very substantial checking range. And then the players after that will, will bet um, more often. Um, and the frequency at which they bet is sort of sort of ascends according to um, their position, up to around 50% on the button. Right, when it goes very multi-way, the out-of-position player basically always checks. The, the first few positions always check because the players behind are going to bet um, a lot of the time. Right, yeah. So when we open from uh, low jack and button and cut off calls, we only, and the big bank calls us, we don't have a CBET range, no? Yeah, because I mean, it's, it's not two. super necessary to have a, a CBET range when you're the first player. Say you're the first player and you get two calls behind you, you really have to have a CBET range. Um, I don't have a CBET range. Yeah, I mean, if, if you get called by two players behind you, and you're in another position, two other yeah. players behind you, um, you don't really have to have a C-bet range. Um, if, 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 if then one of the blinds call, then maybe you can have a small C-bet range. Um, but once again, like you can see here, if you guys check, um, the the cutoff is only betting around 30% of the time, despite the fact that they've got like the aces and the ace king, right? Um, and the kings. So like the, the cutoff here is there's a lot of zebra pairs, the, the two pairs, and that kind of stuff. Um, but the betting frequency is only going to be thirty percent. Um, yeah, they're betting the the kings seventy six percent of the time, and uh, checking a quarter of the time. All right, because a fair chunk of the the kings will, will want to check. Alright. Is there a particular line you guys want to look at first? Can I ask a quick question, um, Thomas? I'm not familiar at all with Mon with Monker Solver. Um, the the columns of numbers where like, you know, for instance where it says check, uh sixty nine point five percent. The the hundreds or the percent of time you check for each you know per per combo and then there's like you know 729 or 744 what what's that column and what's the column with the ones in the 0.5 and the 0.25 yeah so the first com column is the, is, is the combo the second column is the frequency which you take that line the third yeah. one is the expectation that, that it's calculated oh okay and then, okay. then the fourth one is the um is that there's a total number of combos okay thank you I mean, it, because of the way that Moncasol works, it only calculates, it only gives you the EV for for the first street. Like if we like, if we look at a turn, like it won't give you the EV. Okay. Right. Yeah. So there's a particular line you want to look at. We just have to check through. All right, and if you check if you check through, the, the same kind of thing happens, right? You have 
um, the same sort of frequencies at which both players bet or check. Right. Um, here, like after the, the button checks back the um, the flop, the the button's kind of giving giving a bit of a bit of a white flag, right? A lot of the strong hands you would usually want to bet a small amount to try and deny the equity from one of the other two players. So you can see that that's, that's the reason why the here the, the cutoff betting frequency is uh, much higher than on the flop, getting a little bit above forty percent compared to the thirty percent. And then here the buttons check check back and the turn is much lower down at um, sorry checking frequency on the, the turn here is much higher at 74.2 um, on this particular turn although we can, we can change the turn card so um, we don't want to be bigger on the turn if yeah, the we'll flops it's, it's a good turn card for like a seven maybe I mean, yeah, it'd be on on the turn you, you you do you probably do want to bet a bit, bit bigger than than on the flop. Of course, it does depend on what the turn card is. I mean, if the turn is fairly wet, yeah, you got the um, the ace, which is which is a brick, but um, a brick in the sense. I mean, like on this board, everything's going to be a brick on the turn. I mean, it's a brick in the sense it doesn't really do too much. I mean, it does, but it doesn't, um, because there's no draws to start off with. Every turn card is going to bring, is going to create a polar range for each player, rather than like a merge range where um, the checking ranges from either of these players is greatly improved, right? So basically, every every, every turn card is going to be essentially a brick on this board, and so you end up getting a slightly bigger bet size. There you go, two, two, two. Another two card. Another two comes here. Slightly high better fre betting frequency. You check. Fairly high betting frequency. Um, and then once again, the button checks back at a very high frequency. Reason being is after they check back the flop, they're essentially going up. Um, like you can see here, even against a small bet, you have a large folding percentage um, there on the turn. Right for the for the button, compared to the um, the big blind. Um, but if we look at it on the flop, the same kind of bet size, right? The folding frequency is much much smaller. Right. So like when when it checks through like this, the button is kind of giving giving the um, the other two players the white flag. Of course, that there are um, some things going on. Right, the turn card can improve some of the hands in buttons range, um, so the button will, will will still have some defense, but will not have as much as as high of a, of a as high of a defense as on the flop. Um, reason being is because uh, on the flop, once it goes check check, the button is generally going to bet a lot of the hands towards the top of their range to try and deny equity from two players. Yeah, you can see the depending on what the turn card is, the betting frequency for for the two out of position players picks up a lot. That's because they know that the button isn't going to bet for them very very often. Because after the button check back the flop, they have a much weaker hand, and so the button doesn't really have too many strong hands to bet the turn with, and so they're just not going to bet the turn if it checks through. If it checks to them, so like if it checks again, see like a, a river like this. Um, brings a straight or whatever. Check, check. Yeah. But I'm checking a lot. They just have a bunch of um, mace high and weak pairs in their range. They're going to check down, hope to, hope to win at showdown. Of course, the ace high is um, almost never good, um, but it is good a small amount of the time. Can look at the other two ranges in terms of what they're checking. Yeah, a little bit of high card. Um, weaker than SI, and now we get once again a little bit of high card weaker than SI. So SI, SI does win sometimes, very unlikely, but it does win sometimes. And so, 
like the the button really wants to um, really wants to get the show down. I think the hands are weaker than Ace High are gonna are gonna be betting for the button there on on the multi pot. Um, yeah, so that's the check down line. Pretty boring stuff, but it, it's kind of important to know because the check down line happens at a very high frequency, right? It just checks down, um, and it's good to know sort of what's going on and where where you're going to be wanting to bet, and how the checking for each player splits their range. It splits the range quite heavily for the button, right? Especially on the flop, because the button usually wants to bet a lot of their hands on the flop to try and deny equity um, early on, right? Even though it's for, it's for that tiny size. Um, and, and when we, he will bet, we will we will don't call with uh, the second pair, no, from the blind, because we we are not the last on the act, right? Um, yeah, I mean, if it goes check, check, bet, you're going to be calling with, with a bunch Only of second top pairs. Pairs, no? Well, there's a bunch of top pairs, there's a bunch of second pairs, there's a bunch of, um, Oh, ninth, I mean, oh, I fall ninth, I mean, here. Yeah, I mean, the bet was only a quarter of the pot. I don't know um, why I should call that. Wow. Well, like, if it's, if it's half pot, which is probably, um, more, more common. Yeah, well, nine's eight, so seven, Hold, yeah. Wow, I fold my minutes. Uh, yeah. Folding a pair of minutes is high. Seven, ten, seven, cool. Wow, I fold ten, seven. Yeah, wow. but yeah, all the ace high and high card hands fold. And then the calling range is basically like pocket pairs above middle pair. And we have some Queen good Jack backdoor, should. Some good backdoor draws wow. there. Yeah, I mean, there's particularly backdoor, backdoor draws. Yeah, there's a half pot bet in two players. And some of the ace highs here. This messed my mind. Wow. All my strategy are now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you usually don't want to give up against small bets too easily. Um, because a pot size bet. Yeah, then it's almost only top pair or better. Right, it's a little, bit, a little bit of second pair. I mean, those second pairs, particularly, I think. Um, what do I do then? Um, I think have um, backdoor draws against the cutoff, going to be folding more often. Right. Four, fives, what? Oh, yes. I mean, it's, it's against the quarter pot bet. Yeah. Like, all, all the time what's going to happen against a quarter pot bet, you're going to call the turn is going to check through. And this is probably a pretty good turn guard for him. Um, but like if the turn check checks through, then then you can um, if it, try and get the showdown. You can try and bluff those hands. And then you got threes being used as bluff there. All right, threes being used as bluff there. Um, so we can bluff ten ten. If it checks through. It's not so good. Um, yeah, ten's not, not the best turn card, probably. Like six six. Yeah, checks checks through a pretty high frequency on the six. And then, and then the last six you got. Yeah, five four. I mean, y your opponents really just have to have a very high bluffing frequency um, in order to make it work. You're gonna have some showdown value with uh, your your pocket pair. I mean, checking back a lot of the ASI. There in that line, in particular, got forty percent ASI there. All right, which kind of tells you a thing about the, the betting range here. We've got a fair chunk of bluffs in it. I'm talking about. So, I mean, if your opponent's aren't bluffing, then yeah, you can follow the middle pair. Which um, which might be the case. But against stronger opponents, they're just going to have 
um, some good bluffs in their range, then um, you're generally going to want to be calling with even even the the, the weaker pairs, even like bottom pair with, with a good kicker like the yeah, ace two is going to call. Um, some of the pocket pairs, swing seven two might call some of the time, and those hands might even bluff the river. I mean, here if you're in position, you're calling with what ace high. You know, these backdoor draws, they're, they're calling, and like all these pocket pairs are calling. Like the backdoor draws are calling at a higher frequency than the um, the pocket pairs, right? So like you can see, if I um, hover over it, right, like jack 10 backdoor is calling all the time. But without, without the backdoor, it just folds. Right, yeah, same for 9-8. 10 on high frequency, jack, jack, queen jack, and king, uh, queen 10. Very high frequency floats with the back door flush draw. Well, it's a small bet. And when it folds, same kind of thing goes on here for the button. Sorry, for, for the big blind. Right, floating those back doors. Um, the high back doors. Because you're out of position, you want to have. It's more important to have straight in value when you're, when you're out of position than when you're in position. Um, so when you're in position, you can generally float draws, backdoor draws, but when you add position you usually want to have a little bit more shredding volume and so that's why it's a little more dense in ace high and pairs. Of course the, the we discussed at the beginning that the big blind's got more pairs than the button does. More top pairs in particular. What's going on with the uh, pocket sixes on both of those lines? Like I don't see why it really didn't prefer one and then it always does the other for one position. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it goes back to what I was talking about before in terms of the showdown value that you need. When you're in position, you need more showdown value here when you're in position. Because of all these floats with these back doors, you don't really have to defend the pocket pairs at that high frequency. So all these are indifferent to begin with. Right, these, these pocket pairs down here, they're all basically indifferent. But these floats with the back door straight and flush doors aren't. So they're going to be called before these ones are. And that makes up the range. All right. Any more questions about that? So what are we just looking at? So we're looking at the, uh, the the bet line on the flop. Look through the check bound line a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Let's just have a look at um, like against a bet on the flop. So like here, like this is the conceivable spot where. You've got the both the the big blind, the cutoff check, and then the button bets. Button bets pretty small. Um, you can see that in in actual fact, like the, the folding frequencies are roughly the same. Of course, the big blind folds at a slightly higher frequency. Um, and the um, big blind, because they're folding at a high frequency, they're going to be uh, check raising at a high frequency as well. All right. Okay. So like that call, call. Fair chunk of squeezes folding quite a lot of hands. So you can have a look at after it focus back call. I mean, yeah, continuing all the second pair. So it goes check, check, bet, call. Um, continuing with a good chunk of the top pair. Good chunk of the pocket pairs above it. Um, and then in terms of the, the second pair, it either, it either calls and um, or it re-raises. So it can squeeze over the top. Like if we look at the strategy for this, you've got pocket sevens. King seven, um, a little bit of the aces and, and king queen, but the middle pair, because and, and also the um, the bottom pair, those kinds of hands because they block the sets. 
um, and they have you know five outs of each top pair, they end up pretty, being pretty good bluffs for a bluff squeeze. Bluff squeeze there for this size. Um, see once again the uh, the forty frequencies for both players are roughly the same. There's a calling range there. I mean sets, top pairs, some floats, and jacks is a bit weird for me, but okay. Um, Once again, there's a continuing range. Showing the King X and um, Seven X. Can pop it back with you know Set of Sevens, King Seven. All right, that's the check squeeze line. I'm gonna go to the check raise. I mean, the check raising range. I mean, it's it's it's, it's just what you would expect, right? I mean, middle set, bottom set, some corresponding pairs, right? And some top pairs to, to even things out and go for a check raise, check line, um, and then to some other bluffs, right? So if you can look at sort of the set and the top pair as the value component, um, set two pair and, and top pair as a value component, you've got there roughly 40% value, and then um, you can think of the rest as sort of bluffs. So. 60% bluff, so the 40-60 ratio there. Of course, this high density in, in the top pair is only going to be check raised for a single straight, and then often check the turn. So have a look at that. So check raise. Um, they got a little bit of cold calling there from the cutoff, so you can cold call instead of re-raise. Of course, I didn't have a min re-raise in the tree because otherwise it would be too big. If there was a min re-raise, there might be some some more raising. Some of these hands might move into a raise. Um, rather than just a call. Let's say, for example, they fold, and then the big blind, sorry, the um, the button calls, right? You got some donking there on that turn card. Um, another turn cards. Sorry, it's not donking. This is see, but um, depends on depends on the turn card, which 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 one you want to see, but but usually. You're going to want to be checking at a fairly high frequency after you've um, made your flop check raise. Any questions? I'm really surprised that there's as much of a calling range in the in the middle position there for the for the. Uh, Big blind. I always thought multi-way. If you're in the middle, it's more of a of a razor fold just because of the of the squeezing. This will up will apply only in three ways. What? No. In four or five ways, we will check raise more, and we will. Yeah, I mean, less, if, no? if it goes very multi-way, it'll it'll play a lot more like the the ways that I've taught previously because like the, the reason why this this sim is like this compared to what i taught previously is because it's only three-way and the board is very dry right so looking at a very sort of select multi-way multi-way spot just to show you guys the other lines that you can take when playing multi-way besides you know playing very close to to raise or fold when it's still multi-way um yeah Definitely have calls. Definitely have a lot of traps, yep. right? And there's, and, there's, and there's a lot of trapping multi-way, uh, especially when when it's dry like this. Like you know, the cutoff almost always, like they they, they trap kings at very high frequency. Um, like against this check raise, like they're just gonna flat kings and you know see what the turn river brings because kings is basically invincible on this board, um, and it blocks all the top pairs. So. Uh, you're more likely to get bet into it on, on later straight. Now, if if cutoff has a hand like ace king, isn't he like really incentivized to to bet um, and and uh, isolate himself just against one 
one opponent and, and, and fold out like some of the mid pocket pairs. Like he's not really incentivized to to to, to slow play like like Ace King on this board. Or 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 am I wrong there? I mean, Ace King is pretty good. I mean, King, King Queen might be a bit King King and Queen Jack might be a bit more worried because of the chance that the, the Ace comes. Um. I mean, Ace King is pretty solid. Like, if, if you have King Queen or, 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 or King Jack, you'd be more worried that it checks through and then an Ace comes on the turn. Um, so, for, for that reason, those those kinds of um, top pair hands will bet at a slightly higher frequency than, than the Ace King. But, like, Ace King can go for a check, right? So, if it goes check and then um, instead of checking through, it goes quarter, quarter pot, fold, right? You got you got Ace King. You can make a you can go for a small check raise, like that, or you can call and then see what the turn brings. Um, or if it goes bet call, and you can and you can probably squeeze it right. Yeah, squeezing a good good half the time. Okay. So there's lots of different ways you can play it besides betting. So it's important um, as, yeah, I mean, it can, can, if you have headphones, that, that'd be good because otherwise I think there's a loop, um, the, the headphones prevents a loop. Um, well, I mean, a lot of the time, um, as, as, as you're getting better, you, you'll, you'll end up seeing, you'll end up build, putting more checks um, into your uh, into your strategy, right? A lot more checks, a lot more check raises, a lot, a lot more sort of um, traps than than previously, right? When you're playing against very weak opponents, often you can just play straight forward with your hand and then and then bet it, um, because your opponent doesn't really understand that you're revealing something about the strength of your hand by betting. Um, as you become a better player, right? You usually want to have well protected checking ranges so you usually want to be checking some strong hands um, because you know that if you check you reveal something about the strength of your hand or um, something your, your opponent perceives and so your opponent's trying to try and take advantage of that not necessarily exploit you but definitely take advantage of that by betting themselves so if you go a strong hand you, you you can protect checking ranges by going for a bet call um, and like ace king does pretty well as a check here because if you've got ace king, you block um, ace high, which is going to check um, slightly more often than the other hands. So you block checks, and so you end up getting bet into by the button slightly more often. All right, and that betting range, while I mean it, it, it does have a lot of very strong hands in it, it also does have um, weaker top pairs, middle pairs, that kind of stuff. Um, compared to like king queen doesn't really block the ace high um, so you want to want to be, be betting it yourself at a higher frequency than the ace king like if it goes check check um, if it'll load there you got ace high 37.2% checking back versus 28.7% betting right so Checking back slightly more ace high than, than betting for the button there. Um, and the same kind of thing can be said about the turn because your, your blocker um, it, it plays throughout the, the entire game, so um, the entire hand. So you got ace king, you can use that blocker on, on a later street, right? So it's a bit complicated, but your opponent's range, even though they bet some, some ace highs now, they might decide to check those on a later street. So if you check call with your ace king, on the turn, you're going to get bet into more often. Does does that make sense? Yes. Good. All right. I have spread that one a bit, a bit more complicated because you got a blocker across multiple streets there. Um, yeah, but then the, the event, then you're looking at um, the um, you're looking at playing the hand, not just where you are now but one street ahead which is really important another good way to think about um, growing as a player is thinking about how you're going to play the hand um, one street ahead 
which is which is difficult because there's um, forty something turn of and forty something river cards that are going to show up. So you're going to have to think about roughly what you're going to do on each of those. Um, yeah. So any lines you guys want to look at in particular? That raise. So, so we looked at check raise. No, this is what the check raise range looks like. Yeah. Right. Bottom set, a little bit of middle set, a little bit of top set. Um, a little bit of aces. Some strong top pairs. King, queen, ace, king, king, jack. And then, you know, other bluffs, blockers with the middle pair and bottom pair, you know, like a 7-5 suited, 7-6 seven, suited, 8-7, 9 7 definitely these lower ones because it's um, harder to um, have your two-pair counter, uh, counterfeit, uh, not counterfeit, uh, dominated, to have your two-pair dominated by your opponent's stronger two-pair with their king X. Fifty percent raise size, like that. It's a calling range there, pretty straightforward. Um, got the betting range, you know. It's the betting range for the button on the flop. Betting good, good chunk of their um, pocket pairs, which they have a lot of. Um, and then other top pairs and sets. If you look at it as sort of like a block to value ratio, you can consider sort of the sets and top pair to be, you know, um, clear value and the second pair to be sort of, uh, it's not really second pair, I think um, jacks through eights is what they're talking about here with second pair to be sort of between one and two street value, right? You can bet a quarter of the pot, hope to get a call from a seven, depending on what the turn card is, right? You check, and then you're going to be checking back um, a lot of these pairs. So there's nines and eights going to be checking back at 100% um, frequency on that turn card. Right? Checks again. Let's say the river's like a four. Checks, and then checks it down. So checking down. So betting those eights, nines, tens at a reasonable frequency on the flop for the button, and then checking it down. Um, when the Nova card comes, if you look at a different run out, say for example it was like 4-4, four, four, I'm sure, um, yeah, I mean this is still betting, I'm um, sorry, so still checking everything. So, stuff you got to look at there. Um, any other lines you guys are curious about, any other lines that you've run into that you've been a bit confused, or any lines that you think are very common? that you want to cover. This is only for this board, no? On low connected board, we will don't call, no? We'll only have a check raise range? I mean, no, not necessarily. I mean, you're going to have more raises, but um, it wouldn't be as high as um, plain raise or fold. What about when everyone checks around? Yeah, so when everyone checks around. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. It's like, what is it? Uh, what do you stab with or whatever? I mean, it definitely depends on what the, the turn card is. Um, but the stabbing size is going to be bigger. Here, you've got um, two different bet sizes being chosen here the, the quad pot and the, and the pot size bet. Um, but like for the top for the pot size bet, it's going to be like their sets and good top pairs, and then bluffs. Um, and then for the 
pulled apart when we got this pole up. The top pair is protected by some sets and two pairs. And then, you know, a little bit of second pair and also some buffs. Right, so if like you pot it, you're quite polar, so you're not really going to expect to get raised very often. Um, so they're going to fold call. Right, if you check, you're kind of just going to give up. Yeah. Okay. Check folding 75% of the time. Um, so Thanks. when you're betting here, you've got these these big bet sizes here. Turn them set and all in. Slice the pot and the rip. So the range looks like there for the shove. Boats and uh, ASI. Oh, a little bit of trips. I mean, the four is pretty good because you're bluffing a lot of fours um, on the turn. The reason why you're bluffing a lot of fours on the turn is because um, you would have made some sets with that. And so we'll, we'll have the opponents, but the opponents won't have as many. Um, middle and bottom sets in their range because they would have bet them. So you definitely want to be, be blocking the turned set uh, if you can. That is a rivered set. Check, yeah, a lot of tens. Subumi, do you have fish to talk? Oh, found it. I found it. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. More to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I mean, he'll figure himself out. Right. I mean, a, 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 lot of the, a lot of the lines, once they go heads up, they're pretty similar to heads up lines. Um, so we don't really want to look at them. Just, just know that, like, if it goes, if like, if you call and the other person folds, like, you're playing heads up from um, there on in. Okay. You're, you're, you're playing basically heads up from there on in. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Thomas, what do you think, in your opinion, is the most common mistakes that humans or recreationals make in multi-way pots and what kind of exploits do you think they are um, oh, to increase uh, increase EV against against the, that kind of uh, uh, opposition? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of multi-way, I think people don't bluff enough. Mm -hmm. It's probably the main one, and, and and when they check, they end up they end up way too weak. They yeah, they have weak checking good. lines, so you can probe. Yeah, you can probe. You can bet into them. When I was looking at the pl pluribus, is it hands? Uh, Multi-way hands. Um, uh, pluribus is checking back extremely strong, strong hands. Yeah, I mean, like if you look on the floor. We got a little bit of set set checking. Some top pair good, good kicker. Um, yeah, like I, I'd imagine on, on a wetter board, it would be checking back more often with sets and stuff. Um, like you'll hear, look on the turn, it's going to be checking kings a good chunk of the time, checking sevens a good chunk of the time. It's going to be betting the twos a lot. So it it's interesting. It's interesting what you said about the, the not bluffing enough multi-way because uh, from what I, I've picked up from a lot of uh, a lot of various places is it just multi-way just tends to make players more honest in in general yeah. and I've sort of followed along with that kind of thinking um, that when you're versus multiple players um, you're you're up against you know the sum of their of their equity um, bluffing. You know, it hasn't always seemed like such a great idea as far as playing more honest, honestly. But this is uh, interesting to think about bluffing more multi-way situations. For sure, they view everyone as insurance, but it's not true. Like having another person in the pot, you know, they just think you're going to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it depends. It depends who you're up against. I mean, like 
in terms of mistakes, people don't don't they don't bluff enough. They don't, they don't check very strong, and they also bet too big. So um, the combination of all that means that just knowing a few things about multiway makes things a, a lot easier for yourself. Right, knowing that you generally want to bet a bit smaller, um, especially on the earlier streets, and then when it goes heads up, you can you can size it however you like. Um, having some bluffs and being quite selective with your bluffs, and having strong protected checking lines because you know players behind you and you should be betting for you, um, usually means that you'll be out on top quite easily. Like you'll be you know head and shoulders above your your opposition, who don't really know that they play multiway pods like they would heads up pods except they bluff less because they kind of intuitively know that um, with two players to, to bluff catch the buffs aren't going to get through as often um, but on the flip side is that against a bet do players call a lot or, or fold a lot um, not so sure depends depends on sort of what level you, you're, you're playing at um, definitely if you go up a few levels you'll see that players end up slightly overfolding multi-way at least compared to sims like this um, that like to float against especially against a small bet size like to float with good equity good backdoor equity on these kind of dry boards and then on, on wetter boards um, definitely floating their equity so yeah Hopefully that, that answers your question. Do you have any, any other questions? Oh, we can go and have a look at some hand histories if you guys have any. Um, this is a big part of our game. I don't know how you cover this in your book. It will be interesting to see that. Yeah, I mean... How many flops you cover or... I'll cover a handful. I'll cover a handful. Obviously, because the multi-way sims are very RAM intensive. Like this, as I said, was two hundred fifty-six gigabytes of RAM, which is the same as like a preflop sim. Um, yeah, doing single raise pot multi-way isn't isn't easy. Um, hmm. Yeah. So look at this. It's a lot of RAM. Yeah. This is a limping pot. Uh, is that limp pot? Yeah, I mean, it's even more difficult. Um, where are we? 10 9. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can like hide the play and it also makes it easier to read because it just says hijack, low jack, whatever. Um, <laughs> I played with this guy. <laughs> I played with these guys, man. This is 10 and L on stars? Regular tables? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Skiss is a whale, dude. Keep it low key. Um, so MP limps. So hijack limps. Uh, button calls. Small line call. Let me check. I mean. You could probably squeeze the pretty flop. Two nights, pretty good squeeze. Um, my how big and how uh, I don't have, I don't see squeeze versus two limpers. What yeah, size yeah, should I mean, should we use? How big should we? Uh, you make it like 15, 15 big blinds. Should we okay. Um, anyway, your clearu. Adrian? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got you got reads on him, do you? Um. Yeah. Okay. Check. That's good. Bet half pot. Is it cool? We squeeze. I think it's cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that, that, this is fine. Like after after that, they both call. It's kind of. Yeah. It's it's, it's, not, it's not looking so good for you. I mean, if it was back call and squeeze, you both call. So we can have a look at. Where is it? Uh, here. Um, like, for example, 25. I mean, there isn't any 50%, but say 25 call, squeeze, call.
call, like the, the four percent calling range uh, after after there's after the call on the flop. I mean, if the if the ball was was wetter, I'm sure the calling range would be a bit wider in terms of draws, just because. Um, yeah. But the calling range is very tight. It's like the top pair plus is going on here. I mean, there's a little bit of seven six with backdoor, a seven with backdoors. Um, really, just to bluff the next street. Um, in the coin in the continuing range, but there's a lot more raise, um, re, like back back raise over after trapping the foil. Um, yeah, I mean after it goes after it goes call call, sure. right? You should be checking a lot, which is fine. Should mm. I check raise bigger on the flop? Checks down, bet and give up. Um. No, this is fine. And on the turn, if he bet half pot, I should still fold on the turn. Yeah, they're yeah, very yeah. strong. You, 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 you should be very, you should be very strong here. Uh, you de definitely, consider, you definitely consider that. Um. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that hand. Any, any, anyone else have any multi way hands? Let's post it in the tutorial. And then in the tutorial chat and we'll have a look at it. I'm trying to dig something up, I don't know. After it goes call call, like they're both checking like everything. Um, just because after it goes after it goes like like bet call squeeze call call like the second caller is like super nutted, um, like all the time. Yeah. Um, a different take up maybe. Yeah, what is it? Ten. Same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. Bet twenty five with folds. A lot of folds. Yeah, after after you squeeze the flop in the game and then you get two you get both players call. Like the second player who calls um, is, is very, very strong because that they're not bluff catching anymore against you. They, they, they think their hand is stronger than both you and the bluff catchers or the other guy, which is, which is, which is a lot stronger than just a regular bluff catcher, right? Because a regular bluff catcher can, can call a bluff and then, and then after you give up on the turn, bet to get bet to get the flop on the turn. Um, but multi way that that doesn't happen, right? Can't really do that multi way with with the extra player in it. All right. Um, any last minute questions? I think like I'll I'll, I'll go through this in a lot more depth in the in in the book. But I just wanted to show you guys some lines that you can take. Right, rolling your minds about what you need to be doing multi-way in order to play a little bit better. Definitely want to have well protected checking ranges that like we talked about, especially out of position. Um, bet size is a fair bit smaller, and then once you get to the turn, um, you can have, you know, you can size up when it, once it once your head's up. Um, like if if it checks down, right, that the bet sizes. Um, on the turn can be bigger. I mean, like here, here after the button checks, like once they get to the turn, like they they've already said on the flop that they don't have a very strong hand. Then on the turn they change their mind. Um, so so making a big bet kind of makes sense, um, especially because after the first two players both check, their ranges should be fairly um, condensed compared to the button's range. You might have turned a strong hand or or have checked back. 
um, a strong hand to make this this big pot size bet on the turn. Um, but even multi way, like if it, if it checks down, then on the river you can size up. But a lot of flops you usually want a big betting on, uh, a bit smaller than, than you would. Um, or, only, or at most the same size as you would heads up. So like think of, think of your heads up size on that board and then maybe you can get even smaller. Like if it was a very wet board where you might want to pot it, you might only want to go half pot, right, kind of thing. All right, so if no one has any hand histories, um, is there any last minute questions? Uh, would you say in your uh, that compared to like is snow is Snowy's um, strategy tighter the a lot tighter than an output like this for Monica for for multi way? Snowy's a nit. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I think Snowy is, is a bit of a nit, even multi way. Like it, it doesn't have as many of these floats. Right. Um, yeah. So if you're so if someone like me is looking at Snowy for multi-way strategy, I'm going to be a net plant multi-way. Yeah, I mean, I mean also, also, also Snowy like it reflects the preflop ranges as well. The preflop ranges are fairly nitty as well. Um, multi-way preflop ranges. So the combination of the multi-way ranges being being too tight, um, and Snowy's sort of bias towards. Um, under bluffing on, on, on the main lines, right? But then it's not as just weird stuff. Like it, it under bluffs on the main lines, but then it over bluffs on on the on the um, the lines where your opponents show a lot of weakness. Um, so Snowy doesn't really protect its checking range, I guess, um, as much as it probably should. It's it's, it's just got to do with because Snowy it can't split between two sizes. It doesn't really play very well. Um, when when there's spots where you should be splitting sizes, of course in multi-way pods like there's not there's not that lot of, there's a lot of splitting between two sizes, so um, it's not as important. Snowy has definitely gotten better after they added the the twenty five percent bet size in because the twenty five percent bet size is used quite a lot in, in multi-way. Like you look at Snowy even on very wet boards, it'll just quarter pot it um, instead, All right? Instead of either checking or I'm going 50%. So, like, if you want to use Snowy to sort of train multi-way, like, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll do a lot better than a lot of the opponents that you'll probably be playing against. Um, you'll learn quite a few things. But it won't be playing super accurately with, with all the, the kinds of floats that you want to be putting in um, and the different bet sizing. And then, of course, once it gets back to heads up, um, because Snowy thinks that it's been multi-way, it doesn't really understand that once it goes from multi-way back to heads up, that it should be playing a little more like a heads up pot and then um, trying to get money in accordingly. Um, and so it went, went like over bet certain turn cards and that kind of stuff. Like here if it goes um, check quarter pot, fold, call, um, check, there you got the, the regular over bets going on. Right, just as if it was a was a heads up pot. But Snowy, I don't, I don't think we do that after it's gone multi way. Right, thank you. That's why uh, Snowy don't call versus if a uh, big blind squeeze, for example. No, because you don't like to play multi way pots in triple pot. Yeah, because I mean, but, big button can have odds to call, no? And he will be out of position in multi in trivial pot. Yeah, I mean someone doesn't doesn't like to play multi pots too often. This is not I mean it doesn't play multi way through pots. I mean even th these sims here don't don't like to play multi way through pots either. Um, I think there's something to do with the rake being um yeah, ends up having quite a bit of rake associated with multi-way through pots um, compared to the, the, the equity that you have in, in your hand. 
Um, because a lot of the stronger hands would have just three bet instead of calling and then calling the squeeze. Um, yeah. With Snowy, it like uses a a different rake or a higher micro rake or something. Like you can select a. Yeah, you can select select whatever limit, but I'm not sure what what, what the rake is. Uh, like if you go yeah, it doesn't limit, really. It it plays more like you would uh, like like the rake is high, and if you go higher up, it plays like the rake is low, but it doesn't tell you exactly what the rake is. So you can't really right. It doesn't really help you with that. Also, I don't think it has rake free either. I think it's all raked. All right, any other questions? So look at look at a, fair, uh, a good chunk of the lines here. I mean, the multi way line is really going to affect the, the flop. The check, the check, the checking down line um, is is important to know. I realize that on the flop, the two out position players should kind of respect the fifty percent rule. Then after the button checks back. Going onto the turn card, depending on what the turn card is, of course. Um, often the buttons range will be a lot weaker, and so the other position players will, will bet at, at a slightly higher frequency than on the flop. Um, like that, go check, check, uh, check the ten of hearts for whatever reason is not so good. Um, yeah, three of clubs. Uh, they're going from a 10%-ish betting frequency to a 25%-ish betting frequency, going from a 30% betting frequency to a 30% betting frequency um, with that particular turn card. Um, an ace pair not so good, like an eight. Yeah. Um, the, the, once, once it goes check, 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 Right, the, the out of position player um, ends up having uh, a lot of their stronger hands compared to two in position players because the two in position players would have bet the flop um, more often with the very strongest hands. And so the out of position player will have this slightly high betting frequency to try and prevent checkbacks from the two in position players. Um, with here on the turn, right, once we, the, the chance that it goes. I have the chance it checks through again after the opposition play checks. Um, it's going to be close to 50%. So like 72 um, times 70 is around 49. So it ends up being um, roughly 50%. So it still ends up respecting a 50% rule, except it's changed a bit. Here the opposition player is um, defending against the two imposition players. Right, the opposition players with, with their very stronger hands and the two imposition players with... Um, slightly weaker ranges, um, right? The out position player bets and checks such that the two in position players can't bet more than half the time collectively. Um, compared to on the flop, it's the two out position players and the uh, and the button. And the reason why that's the case is because the density of the very strongest hands are roughly the same. This is on the turn the density has changed. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope you will will post this video to I want to review it. Yeah yeah I'll put it. I don't want to say very much. Uh check 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 and say it checks through again. Uh, the river is like a, uh, uh, three. Or it can do something like make it play to straight or something. Um, yeah, a fair amount of checking as well. Right, you can you can see this the fifty percent rules. Um, the fifty percent rules in action. The out position player is checking such that the two in position players can't bet more than half the time. Um, it depends on what the turn the river is. Right, the three is fairly bricky for everyone. Um, so the opposition player, because they checked a fair few strong hands on on the flop, they're now playing against two position players. So uh, on, on on the flop, when all three ranges have roughly the same density, the very strongest hands, 
the the fifty percent rule is going to going to apply only to to the button. Um, so this is a throughout port. Um, but then after it checks through the turn, the um, fifty percent rule applies to the two in position players collectively. So the out position player checks such that the two in position players can't bet more than half the time um, collectively, generally on on the turn. Because in the turn, the density of the strongest hands from from the flop has changed. The out position player has a lot of the stronger hands, and the two in position players don't because they would have bet them on the flop. Yeah. So like here on the turn. Um, so like here on the turn, like if we've got pocket sevens, right, which we checked on the flop between check raise, but that check raise failed. Um, in order to want to check raise it again, we would want our opponent to be betting into us more than half the time, right? Because if they bet more than half the time, we win two bets half the time, which is more than one bet that we put in ourselves. Right, that's, that's a quick way you can think of the reason why you have fifty percent, because if they bet into us more than half the time on average, we win two bets with a check raise. But if we instead just bet, we only win one, win one bet. Um, of course, there's also through betting and, and and raising over our bet as well. Um, but those sort of roughly end up being uh, about the same. Right, so. That's why the fifty percent rule here applies to this guy on the turn. So the aperture player on the turn, um, but on the flop, right? It's the two players defending against the the button, right? And 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 you should see that this this kind of um, setup apply in any kind of flop or even four way five way kind of things going on. Where the out of position players initially, when the ranges have roughly the same density of the very strongest hands on the flop, the out of position players check at a very high frequency to make the in position players, um, especially with the last player, bet less than half the time. Um, and then going into the turn, it'll be the in position players betting less than half the time collectively. Um, yeah, so that's the check line. Um, Ten cards that we're particularly interested in. No, not really. So you can see here, like sixty-four, sixty-seven percent. I mean, it's kind of uncanny. It's like sixty-seven. Zero point seven five, fifty percent betting frequency. Right, um, fifty nine percent times seventy eight percent. Right, forty six percent checking frequency. Um, no diamonds, sixty nine point five. 71.6, you can already tell it's going to be 49%. Um, two of spades, 65.4 times 84.3. So this is 0 0.654 times 0 0.843. 55.2% checking frequency. All right, so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 un it's uncanny what happens, right? And this happens like everywhere. So why it's a fifty percent rule because it just happens every everywhere. Um, right, and it's got to do with the range instruction for the out of position player. Cool. Um, so yeah, a bit of a reminder of the fifty percent rule and how it applies to multi-way pots. Um, any other questions? I don't know what to ask. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of information. 
Yeah, pretty, I hope. pretty, pretty brilliant though. That fifty percent roll is pretty brilliant. I will, yeah, study, like, I, I will review this video and I want to make another one when I will be much, much prepared, better prepared. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you can, you can rewatch it and then you can repair some questions and then for the next tutorial or whatever, you can ask them or you can put them in the um, tutorial chat and I'll try and answer them. Um, yeah, and if if you guys want to have a like the the, the next multi way sim, I'll run. I'll probably do a tutorial with it as well. Uh, might be multi way through report or something. Who knows? Those multi way through reports don't happen very often, so it's probably going to be another the multi way single race pod, maybe on a more wet board or something. With a slightly different ranges, so you're gonna have a look at what's what's going on. Someone typing something. Anyways, yeah, so I got the, the new Patreon. Might as well plug it. You will yeah, post on Patreon. You guys have, you guys have seen it. Uh, this is the wrong one. Public page. Uh, yeah, so this. Got different levels. I got one pair, two pair, all the way up to five of a kind. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, Join with them. I don't know. If you get three of a kind, then I'll, then I'll have to read your name. Like, if, if you don't want me to read your name, you can, like, lead us, leave a pseudonym, like a funny pseudonym, and I'll read that out. Um, I think we can put it, I don't know, I don't know where, where you can put it. You can write it down in the, uh, in the address or something, I don't know. Um, same for the, same for the two pair. If you don't want your, your name name, you can just, leave a pseudonym and I'll put that in. Um, I might change some of the some of the perks around a little bit and change the pricing a little bit um, just to make it a bit more equitable. Um, especially because like you know, like direct request for a tutorial, right? It's a pretty powerful request. Um, it's like, I want to show it on X. I was like, okay, let's do that. Um, which is a tad demanding, but then it goes, yeah, I don't know, the pricing's, a bit, the pricing's a bit weird. But yeah, join on the Patreon, and I will put your name in the description, or I will read it out. Get those two. I mean, a lot of you guys probably already have early access, um, so like this isn't gonna be super like important to you. Um, but like, if, 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 you, if you already bought the book and you get this one, I'll give you another book. So you get two books. Um, what you do with the second book, I don't know. You can decide to um, resell it or keep a copy to your bookshelf or donate it to your library. I don't know. Um, but if, if you if you've already bought the book and you get this, I'll give you another book. So yeah, thanks to people who have started to support me on Patreon already, and thanks to you guys for joining the tutorial. And I'll put this straight up onto. Um, YouTube so you guys can rewatch it and then if you've got any questions you can put it into the um, yeah it'll be on the Zen's YouTube to watch it again um, you can just put the questions into, into I mean you can ask them on YouTube but I, I will get to them um, but you can post the questions here in the tutorials and theory um, chat on the discord um, and that that way other people can, can look at them as well other people can answer the question um, and getting some advice from the other people in this group is uh, a good way to do it because there's a lot of um, a lot of very strong players in the group um, in the community group that you can get advice from um, and some of them might even have Munker and run their own multi-way sims um, I don't know of too many people that that have, but they will hire a server and then run a 256 gigabyte sim on multi-way single race pot um, yeah, no joke. Of it because like why would you do that when you can use that same resources to run a preflop sim which is usually more valuable um, but yeah two 
to fast question. Yeah. Uh, when you will show us how to buy Bitcoin and send you Bitcoin to don't pay taxes. And the second one is uh, when you will put the new post flow sims. Yeah, the, the new post flow sims, I'll, I'll get them up as, uh, as soon as I can. I mean, part of the, part of the Patreon was to give um, to get a little bit more funds so I can um, add more bells and whistles to the website. For example, like I want to hire out like a 10 terabyte Google Drive. And so I can mm. just chuck like loads of sims onto that for you guys to download. Um, yeah, that's probably the way I'll do it. Um, and in terms of like how to get Bitcoin, I mean, if you're in the you're like in here in the pre-sale, there was a link. Um, we can use this link, and this goes to to Coinbase. Um, yeah, so that's that's okay. my that's my first four names. So then you can sign up and then you can buy through that. And there's also like this um, this earn thing as well, where like if you watch videos or, or whatever, you can get free money, which is kind of strange. Um, I don't think there's a lot of free money, but there's like, you can get like $10 for each one. Um, and then you just sell it and transfer it to Bitcoin. So like, yeah, I don't know. I did it and again, ended up getting like an extra 50 bucks for what for just <laughs> watching the videos and, so, and clicking like it's yeah you watch a two minute video okay. you watch a two minute video and um, answer a single multi choice and then you get two dollars and you do that twenty five times and then you get fifty bucks so it's a bit it was a bit and I was like this is this is uh this is a bit strange but yeah you can you can do that and you can get um you can buy Bitcoin directly or you can um not even buy Bitcoin and then just just use that. I can uh, use that bloody um, earn thing if you don't want to fork out any money. Um, although I'm not sure whether or not you have to hook up your credit card to the earn thing before you can do it. Maybe you do. Maybe the maybe that's one. Maybe they want to caveat that you get they get your credit card detail. Um, but it's usually not a huge thing um, because in this day and age, if they have got your credit card detail, they don't really they can't do anything with it. Um, also, they don't want to do anything with it. They'd rather not have your credit card details. Um, do you use honest, Revolut? Because it ends up being a security risk. Sorry? Do, do you use Revolut card? Or no? Sorry. In Europe, it's very... In Europe? It's very... Yeah, yeah, I mean, this, um, this is a pretty big exchange in Europe as well. Okay. I, mean, I think this is either top one or top On the... two exchanges for, for Bitcoin globally. So... Um, yeah, I w I w yeah, we should be pretty easy to get into if you're in Europe. I mean, like if you're in like some weird country, um, then you might not be able to get in. But if you're in Europe, yeah, you should be fine. Okay. Uh, so that's, Thank the, you that's very much. the how to how to Bitcoin. Um, yeah. Any other questions? ETH for when the physical book will be shipped. So I'm trying. To, I'm planning to get it finished on the first of May. And so after I get it finished, um, I'll try and get it shipped as, as soon as I can after that. It takes a while to, to, to print and ship. Um, although that, that first of May date might be pushed back depending on how much I want to put into the book. Um, because I'm done with like a lot of the math stuff. Um, it's just waiting on a bunch of these sims. And these sims take ages to run because I want to run them with like high quality sims. Um, because these sims will end up in the library. I mean, maybe not this one because it's a um, it's a Monka sim, but like the definitely the GTO ones. Like I want to put like the full GTO ones. I'll show you one for example. Um, I talk with Pikaface like, to help you. Uh, like 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 some mm -hmm. of these. Um, like here, here, the size of this this that that paired three bit pot sims. Right, it's through that pot, so you know, like it's it's smaller, right? The trees are smaller. The trees of this one are only like twenty gigabytes or twenty five gigabytes, but the the twenty sims together is like a gigabyte Damn. of storage. So like that's why I need that ten terabyte Google Drive in order to share it um, with you guys. So that that's, that's part of the reason why I wanted to get the um, the Patreon up and running because the, the ten terabyte storage is. Um, 
it, it's it's a pretty penny, right? Like ten terabytes of storage on online is is not is not inexpensive. Um, so yeah, like I would I would want to do like I want to do one of these for for all these, right? One zone dry, connected, unconnected, da 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 da. da. Um, and then single race pods might be they might end up being like four or five gigabytes per like block of sims right for like 20 sims you get it, it, it's five gigabytes of data which you have to download before you can start to view it um, and that way you'll be able to play against it in the solution right so like um, versus having to solve each turn which is which is annoying because like but before it had to play against the solution I was like yeah right you can solve the turn yourself but um, where is the play against the solution even? How so those sims do we need to open these sims? Sorry? 8 gigabytes? How you much need, RAM you, do, you, do, you, do you we need? need? You don't need any RAM. Um, th these ones, because um, you don't have to solve or do any solving yourself, you, you don't need any RAM. Yes, um, I know. I have uh, post uh, t all the turn solve sims. And, uh, yeah, they, so uh, the, 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 these, I... these ones are the full solves. Right, that's why I want to upload this to a drive. It's a gigabyte. So instead of solving all the turns and rivers yourself, you just download the entire thing, and it's already completely solved. So you don't have to solve a turn again. So like you can just click through, and then it goes straight to the turn, right? Or straight to the I, river. I have the single race one, uh, one pair board, and uh, have five gigabytes, and block my PC from pickup face. Yeah, I mean that, that that'll happen. Right, so like you'll end up out of you'll you'll run out of storage. Um, but you shouldn't run out of RAM. Like you should be able to to you should be able to view each each when, sim just fine. When you open a save sim and you're and you're viewing it, doesn't it kind of lo like take a block of your RAM and sort of yeah, occupy I mean, it? Yeah, it, it would it would take it would take um it would take the RAM for that for that sim. Right, but if, if 20 sims is is a gigabyte, or a gigabyte then you have a gig of RAM. Well, only if I loaded all 20 sims simultaneously. Ah. Uh, I'm only loading oh, okay. one of them, then I'm only chucking in like 200 megabytes Marginal. of RAM, which is which is not a lot. Um, and like you can you can look at it like going from one sim to the next on on my computer only takes a couple seconds to load in. Um, so depending on how fast your computer is, it might only take a few seconds to load in and then loads the entire sim. So you can just go through and look at every single line in, in very fine detail um, without having to, to load the turn again um, to solve the turn. Where was the play against the solution? In PO, the, when you open the sims, they're huge in your RAM. For me. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a blue card up in the top right by the, by the tree. Oh, yeah, one, that's... Yeah, um, play versus mm -hmm. second, play versus database, play versus the current tree, here is in position, here we will switch. Right, so like play versus database, like you sit down. Um, right, and then boom, you have the play against the solution, you have all these options you can choose from. Right, and you can do whatever. Right, cool, cool. Yeah, um, yeah jam, I don't know, see what happens, I've got trips. Um, right, and then that way you can. Um, do some training, I guess, and then like if you're very confused about the spot, you can go and look through, look through the the line immediately, right? And you go back to play against the solution, look at the line, go back, yeah. see what's going on, check, check, da da, da right? That's why so, I asked to see yeah, for that, sims. That, that, that's that's why the sims from now on will be will be saved in full, so you can just download it and then play against it immediately. But, but the the thing that was holding me back was that because the sims are so big I would need a lot of storage to put it on right because currently the entire the, the entire library um, excluding the, um, the the contributors is only about 10 gigabytes which is fine for, for storage online but once I had a bunch of these um, I'll suddenly get up to 100 gigabytes very quickly um, and then over over a period of a few months it'll it'll end up being um, a few terabytes right so um, yeah. That's why I want to get a lot of storage. For uh, sure. Also, also, also that way you guys can upload um, 
you guys, I don't know if there's a way to do it. You might be able to upload directly into my storage. So that way you I'm going to have to buy this. Share stuff. GTO Plus. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't got GTO Plus already, you should, because GTO Plus yeah. is very cheap. It's like 75 bucks. Yeah. And then, uh, Look at all the sims. Yeah, there's a lot of sims. All right, any other questions? Uh, anything, anything at all? You, why you don't speak with other guys who have 64 gigabytes to, to run more sims? Or you don't need? Yeah, yeah I speak to, to yeah. a handful. Like, there's... Um, Anyone, anyone who has a lot of RAM and wants to run Sims for me, they can. But usually, what happens is they end up running running one or two, and then they just forget, um, which is fine because they, can have, they have a couple of databases. Can she? Yeah. Can she run them kind of like an like an uh, an uh, like a script? Like, can't you run a bunch of flops in a row and have it just keep solving and yeah, saving? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in in GTO, in GTO Plus, you you type in a bunch of flops and it'll go through all of them in a row and that's called it's called a database hmm. you can make it as, as big nobody, or as small as you want maybe nobody motivated these people maybe i will talk to them and if they run want to run sims yeah i mean put sims to contact with them. Pick a uh, face do that i hope i talk a lot of, with him before he buy the computer. There was these other sims as well. The workstation. I don't know if these are these four. No. Um, sorry, I've got so many sims. Um, just keep track of all my folders. Uh, do, do you have the uh, pair of flops, single A spot? Five gigabytes, the big one. Why do? You... Um, don't think I downloaded that one. From pick up Oh yeah, I, I might have. I think it's in my it's in my downloads folder. Um, yeah, he he went and and re redid that. That was that was nice of him. Um, where did it go? to find out what like oh no here it is yeah yeah this one this one this is the one you're talking about yeah um, yeah this blocked my pc <laughs> that's a huge one yeah like say, say but for uh, example, say after for example, after this... 10 minutes after 10 minutes it work you know but yeah, takes yeah, yeah, 10, yeah. 10 minutes it has to load in. Yeah. Like Time for an upgrade, this, eh? This one here is, is like 7 gigabytes, and this one here is 3 gigabytes. That's just single raised pots. Can you split that? 7 gigabytes? Um, not once it's already in done. Three? But once it's already oh, done, you can't really split it. Oh, so I should buy another PC. <laughs> because uh, yeah. I have only 8 I mean, gigabytes. I mean, well. like, well, you can wait a while. I mean, it's, even, it's taking my computer a while to load in as well. Um, but like compared to Munka, like Munka takes like an hour to load. Um, I, I don't know the guy. I don't know the, the programming for for Munka isn't isn't so good. And I was looking, I was looking at GTA Plus, which can load what appears to be something like ten terabytes in a few minutes, but Munka can't load wow. five hundred gigabytes in 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 sorry ten uh, ten gigabytes in a few minutes, but Munka can't. Um, so Munka's yeah. not that great. Yeah, it's in terms of a program, it's the, the the viewer isn't isn't very efficient for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, single raised single raised pot pad boards between the big on the button. I think this is this is uh, this was redone um, thanks to um, what's the name he did it? Pick a face. Yeah, pick a face. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to think of this. He asked me, and I recommend him to talk with you about this and help the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, like th this is one I'll probably upload. Like this is why this is why I need the, the storage, right? Because like if, if if I try to upload this one, I end up blowing my storage um, because Google only <laughs> gives you fifteen gigabytes for free, and like this is already seven and a half gigabytes. There's already half of it. That's why I need to upgrade the, the storage to 
or something like either, either the two terabyte tier or the ten terabyte tier. Um, probably start with the two terabyte and then up to the, up to the ten. Oh, the other one's loading. Doesn't crash my computer. If the stream suddenly stops, you know what happens. You know what happened. Did it crash? Yeah, it crashed. Oh well. Uh, if you're watching at home, thanks for watching.